Our second speaker is Dr. Roy Shamali. Dr. Shamali will not be able to be with us today, so we have his session pre-recorded. He's a professor of infectious diseases at the University of Texas uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in the School of Public Health. He's a widely recognized expert in infectious diseases, particularly viral diseases of stem cell transplant recipients, and within that group, CMV as well. Again, he's a widely pub published author with well over 200 peer-reviewed manuscripts. Um, he also has been the principal investigator on some recent clinical trials for approval of antiviral drugs, such as latermavir and ribavir, two drugs that, again, very important to CMV recipients. So since Dr. Shamali isn't here, a colleague of his, Dr. Fareed Kawaja, is going to answer questions. Dr. Kawaja just raised his hand there in the front row. He'll answer questions at the end of the study. Um, I'm sorry, at the end of the presentation. And with that, we'll get started with Dr. Shamali. Th thank you for the nice introduction. Uh, so I would like to share with you uh, our result on the CMV T cell immunity panel to assess the risk of clinically significant CMV infection in recipient of cellular therapies who had low level of CMV viremia. These are my disclosures as a consultant, speaker, or advisor, as well as uh, receiving research grant which were paid to my institution. So a little bit about the CMV specific immunologic assays. There is different platforms uh, like intracellular cytokine staining uh, are primarily academic, although uh, it is available commercially through Viracore Eurofins. Uh, there is some uh, clinical data uh, for disease prediction. There is the MHC multimer staining, uh, as well as it is uh, primary academic. Uh, but the last two that you see listed here, which are the interferon gamma release, as a either ELISA platform or ELISPOT platform, uh, there is uh, um, also uh, many clinical uh, data published out there trying to look at the utility of this assay to predict CMV uh, infection or reactivation, but at the same time to predict progression of low level CMV uh, viremia. Uh, today, I would like to share with you the use of the CMV T cell immunity panel uh, from Viracore Eurofins to see does it help us or is it able to predict disease progression from low CMV uh, viremia uh, to uh, clinically significant CMV infection, certified by use of leturmovir or not for primary uh, prophylaxis. So the study aims of our uh, prospective trial was to identify hematopoietic cell transplant and CAR T cell recipient who had low level CMV viremia, but they are at high risk of progressing to clinically significant CMV infection based on their CMV uh, T cell immunity panel or CMV TCIP while on or off leturmovir for prophylaxis wanted to assess the benefit of early treatment of low CMV uh, viremia or low level of CMV viremia in this patient population who are not on leturmovir prophylaxis but at high risk for clinically significant CMV infection and to determine the utility of CMV TCIP in the management of low level CMV viremia in high and low risk patients on leturmovir for prophylaxis. Uh, it is a prospective cohort study of hematopoietic cell transplant recipient and CAR T cell recipient at risk for clinically significant CMV infection who had low level CMV viremia. It's to, uh, it is a single center study done at our institution. And we defined low level CMV uh, reactivation as CMV viral load less than a thousand international unit per ml or less than 500 IU per ml for patients with graft versus host disease or and or on systemic corticosteroid at the time of enrollment and before initiating anti-CMV therapy. Clinically significant CMV infection was defined as CMV viral load above a certain threshold which, in, which prompted initiation of anti-CMV uh, treatment. 
These are the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, and, and briefly, the inclusion criteria were, were allogenic uh, HCT recipient within a year from transplantation or CAR T cell therapy recipient for treatment of lymphoma or multiple myeloma within six months of therapy. They have to have a documented low level uh, viremia on the CMV uh, PCR assay. And our lower level of detection was less than 98 IU per ml, but they can have up to less than 1,000 IU per ml or less than 500 IU per ml if they are at high risk, meaning they are, have graft versus host disease or receiving uh, and or receiving systemic corticosteroid at the time of enrollment. And we enrolled only adult patient 18 years of age or above. The exclusion criteria were patients who had a prior or known prior CMV reactivation or CMV and, uh, and organ disease before uh, being approached for enrollment. Uh, if they are not past 28 days post allo transplant or CAR T cell therapy, uh, CAR T cell therapy who are at high dose steroid. Uh, meaning prednisone equivalent for more than one meg per kg daily at time of screening, they were excluded. Or patient receiving already anti-CMV therapy for greater than 24 hours. Uh, cord blood transplant recipient, we did not enroll on this trial because this patient, even with very low level of viremia, they may end up being treated uh, with anti-CMV therapy. And patients are really sick enough on vasopressor, mechanical ventilation, and other, which survival is probably less than three months. And the last exclusion criteria is patients who are unable to give informed consent. The outcome of interest were, uh, uh, you know, uh, or the primary endpoint where the it's to determine the rate of progression from low level CMV viremia to clinically significant CMV infection while on or off Leturmovir for primary prophylaxis. And secondary endpoint that we were interested in were cancer relapse, CMV and organ disease, resistant or refractory CMV infection, and, and, and all cause mortality up to six months from enrollment. Uh, we certify patient if being on the term movie, as you see here on the right upper part of the slide, uh, we looked at initial testing with CMVTCIP, uh, either at baseline week one or week two, and they were positive. We observe the negative, we also observe. Now, if they were off Leturmovir for primary prophylaxis, if they had positive CMVTCIP, we kept them under observation with low level CMV viremia. But if they have negative CMVTCIP uh, early, they were treated early on uh, for their CMV uh, viremia, even at the low level. And as you see here in the table, this is the timeline and the schedule of event and how many times we measure their CMVTCIP uh, from enrollment, which was week zero and up to week eight from enrollment. Uh, and uh, total, uh, we uh, plan to enroll a total of 40 patients uh, per arm. So a total of 80 patients for the both arm uh, as well. On the non litter of your arm, we decided later on, we amended the protocol to not only include allogenic hematopoietic cell transplant recipient, but also to have at least up to 15 patients who receive CAR T cell uh, therapy. Uh, as of today, we had uh, 70 patients who were enrolled. Five withdrew from the study for different reasons. We end up with 65 patients. 36 were on Leturmovir for primary prophylaxis and 29 of Leturmovir for primary. They did not receive Leturmovir for primary prophylaxis, 21 allogenic HCT recipient and eight CAR T cell recipients. And let's go over the result. This is the baseline characteristic of this speech at the time of enrollment. Total of 65, 29 on, non, on no Leturmovir and 36 on Leturmovir. There were some differences in some of the variables that you see listed here. First, patient who were on Leturmovir for primary prophylaxis were younger uh, when you look at median years or median age compared to patient on non Leturmovir. Uh, more male. Uh, receive Leturmovir than female uh, in this cohort that we enrolled on, but also another characteristics, uh, more multiple myeloma on the non-Leturmovir arm, which is, makes sense because they receive CAR T cell therapy in this patient as well. Uh, and this is the main baseline characteristics. Um, 
when uh, we certify patient who received letrumovir or did not receive letrumovir, uh, and we looked at the initial testing with T cell immune panel or T or CMV TCIP, either at baseline, if we have a missing data at baseline or it was non quantifiable, we went to week one or even week two. Patient with poor T cell response, which was defined as CMV specific CD4 or CD8 activity less than 0.2 or 0.20%. We had 13 patients. Out of the 13 patients with poor T cell response, as defined here, five progressed to clinically significant CMV infection on follow up. Patient with good T cell response, uh, which is defined. Uh, CMV specific CD4 and CD, CD8 activities more or equal to 0.20%, and we had 15 patients and only one progressed to clinically significant CMV infection. Here we saw a trend on the p value, and because it was a low number, we did not reach significance, as you, you know, on this and, and on this arm at least. We had a patient who were unable to quantify uh, their T cell response, and probably most of them had very uh, low uh, uh, lymphocyte count, and we're still looking into the data, and out of this A3 progress to clinically significant CMV infection. Now, if you look at the R on the bottom here, for patients who were not on Letulmovir for primary prophylaxis, and had low level CMV reactivation at enrollment, we also look at their initial uh, CMV T cell immunity or immune panel at the baseline week one or week two. We had five with poor T cell response and two out of the five progressed. And it was actually statistically significant. The patient with good T cell response, if they were off Leturmovir, 19 patient, no one or zero progressed to clinically significant CMV uh, infection, and the CMV TCIP was highly predictable of progression if they had good, uh, you know, T cell response because we had zero progress and it was slightly significant. And we had five patients who had uh, we were unable to quantify the T cell response um, in the first uh, two weeks uh, from enrollment, and three out of this five progressed to clinically significant uh, CMV infection. Now, let's delve a little bit more into details what happened to these patients who were either on Leturmovir at the time of enrollment or off Leturmovir. Uh, first, if we look at CMV peak viral load, medium peak viral load uh, for these patients, what we identify, if you look at the Leturmovir arm actually, uh, the patient who progressed to clinically significant CMV infection, meaning they were had a little bit higher of CMV viral load and they were initiated on therapy, their peak viral load was, uh, median peak viral load was 486 IU per ml, as you see here. And the patient who did not progress uh, to clinically significant CMV infection had much lower uh, peak viral load at 37.1 IU per ml. Now, when you look at the patient who were not on primary prophylaxis with the Turmovir, they had much higher median peak viral load, um, especially if they progressed to clinically significant CMV infection, and lower uh, if they did not progress. Now, when we looked at the, uh, the uh, CD4 response uh, uh, or CD8 response, you see here, patients who were on the Turmovir at the time of enrollment have much lower uh, CD4 response if they progress to CMV infection or clinically significant CMV infection, but also at the same time, their CD4 response, if they did not progress, was higher above 0.2 or 0.20 percent, but still pretty low when you compare to patients who were not on Leturmovir uh, uh, at the time of enrollment where the CD4 count, if they progress, was low, but if they did not progress, was much higher when you compare to patients who were on Leturmovir at the time of enrollment. Now, for a CD8 response, as you see listed here, uh, you know, for patients on Leturmovir, they had a good CD8 response, and this make us think that probably when they had low level of reactivation, they already CD8 T cell response is going up when we enrolled them, as you see it here, uh, you know, uh, even if they had clinically, if, even if they progress to see uh, to clinically significant CMV infection, uh, and if they did not, they had lower uh, CD8 response. Now, when you look at the patient. Uh, on no Leturmovir at the time of enrollment and looking at their CD8 response, they had lower 
CD8 uh, T cell response when they had clinically significant CMV infection versus much higher if they did not progress to clinically significant CMV infection. So it's interesting uh, finding, as you see here listed in the table, although the p-values uh, for the uh, CMV TCIP did not reach significant, and I think this because we had lower power when we analyzed this data and we need to continue enrollment and complete uh, the cohort enrollment in order to see if still this trend turned out to be significant or not. Uh, I'm sorry, let me do. Okay, now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our other uh, endpoint that we looked at, we're interested to see what were the transplant uh, and mortality outcome for these patients at two months and six months from enrollment. So we're specifically interested in relapse uh, rate as well as mortality at this two specific time endpoint. And what we found when you stratify by poor T cell response versus good T cell responses, that at six months at least, they were trend toward more relapse in patients with poor T cell response for CMV and also higher all-cause mortality at six months for patients with poor T-cell response. And what is that telling us that the CMV-specific uh, T-cell response or CMV-TCIP is kind of surrogate marker of the whole immune system at this time point for this patient. And that's why there is an impact on relapse as a trend, but also on all-cause mortality at least at six months uh, timeline from enrollment. Conclusions, our result demonstrate that poor CMV specific T cell immunity can be associated with clinically significant CMV infection and six months will cause mortality. And patients who were on Leturmovir had lower peak CMV viral load, especially when they were initiated on treatment and had lower CMV specific CD4 count with or without, uh, or not for CD4 response with or without clinically significant CMV infection compared to patients who were on no leturmovir. And what are the potential clinical scenarios for uh, cellular mediated immunity for CMV if it's going to be used in allogenic hematopoietic cell transplant recipient? I think there is a, a good role of uh, either CMV TCIP or other platform like the ELISPOT assays or ELISA assays in order to help us to manage this patient uh, with either for preemptive therapy, either they have low level CMV viremia or not, are they gonna progress uh, to clinically serious CMV infection, especially if they were on leturmovir for primary prophylaxis. And you see at the bottom of this table, if you have a blips while on leturmovir, do you need to stop leturmovir and start treatment? Or maybe I can send the blood of, the, of, this, of this patient to look for CMV TCIP, and if it's poor, then probably we should stop it removing and start treatment early on. But if they had good CMV T cell response, continue treatment, continue prophylaxis with little movie, repeat probably viral load later on and see maybe the blips is gone and you don't need to stop uh, primary prophylaxis. So stay tuned, hopefully we'll have final result in the near future, try to confirm uh, our data, especially the trend that we saw from the CMV TCIP. And thank you for your attention. Okay, so we have Dr. Kwaja here, and he can help uh, answer any questions. Okay, um, so I'll just kind of, uh, I, I just kind of talk a little bit more about the study. So it was, um, we started it three years ago. Um, due to COVID-19, it was kind of slowed down, but we were able to get to near complete uh, enrollment. Um, and like Dr. Shamali showed, we really sh noted that with the ViroCore T-cell immune panel, we could maybe perhaps predict a progression to severe CMV infections. Uh, and the utility of this test could be pretty wide range, as Dr. Shamali mentioned as well. It could be used to predict who needs early therapy. In, in fact, maybe who should be started on secondary prophylaxis uh, for CMV with restarting latermavir in many instances. Uh, so that's kind of the, how the study is looking towards right now, and hopefully, like he said, in the next year or so, we'll finish our primary results. Oh, yes, go ahead. Yes. 
So could you just tell us a little bit about, was this study done to look at latermavir, or was this study done to look at the assay? Because it's a relatively small number, mm -hmm. and um, they're suggestive. You know, you're you're hovering around the significance level. But but should uh, and are there are there going to be more results coming out from this study? Does it need to be repeated? What what's the next step in your mind? Got it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, so the study was created to really test the assay. Well, because at the time of initiation, the landscape of CMV management had changed significantly with the introduction of latermavir on the market. So we had to incorporate the protocol to try to better understand what latermavir, how the impact of latermavir would be on this assay as well, which is why we created a second cohort for latermavir patients and another one for non-latermavir patients. So we could better understand uh, whether uh, the CD4 assay would be helpful in predicting progression in uh, latermavir patients or not. Uh, whether breakthrough infections would be predicted with the use of this assay. So really that was the intention of that development of that core, but overall the study was meant to test the assay. Um, yes, the study's almost, the, part, the end enrollment was supposed to be 80 patients total, so we still have to finish up to 10 more, but um, we're thinking that we may have to extend the number of patients even further than that to better power the study. It was an initial more hypothesis building protocol, uh, and hopefully within the next year we'll be able to re reach full power uh, to get better results out. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Oh, in, um, I see that in your study, um, you said a positive uh, CMV uh, immunity means um, positive both T cells and uh, CD, uh, CD4 and CD8, right? Do you see the um, difference between like uh, the association between uh, CD4 and CD8 and with uh, that's a really good question. Um, we haven't had the chance really to divide the two groups. Uh, mostly patients who had low CD4 activity more often overlap with those who had poor CD8 activity. There are very few situations that we saw where one was uh, above and the other one was low. So it's a very small cohort of patients with this discordant result. Majority of them, again, overlap. So we're, it's, we can't really infer from the data we have at the moment. It's a good question. Um, the definition that we used for poor uh, immunity was either one or the other CD4 or CD8 function was low. Um, so it is a good question. It should be looked at in the future. Okay. Thank you for the talk and um, for the answering questions. I had a question about there was an ASH abstract that was recently mentioned that termovir prophylaxis does affect the immune reconstitution of CMV specific cells later on. Is that a, a little bit of concern that you, we may be causing too much reactivation later after day 100 because there's not enough to constitute? Yeah, that's a good question. Again, it wasn't in the scope of the study, but it's something we did kind of notice. Um, many of the patients on the latermavir arm of this protocol were enrolled early on after transplant, whereas those who were off latermavir often past day 100. Um, and that's another reason perhaps why we saw the CD4, CD8 function was different. Um, and I kind of understand, I remember the studies that you're kind of quoting where we did see a slow CMV specific CD4, CD8 reconstitution after transplant on latermavir patients. Um, this study unfortunately was not set up to look and answer that question. Um, it, it has, we kind of have, we're able to see a difference um, in, terms of the, in terms of patients, but there's a lot of other factors that may have affected our results, such as time from transplant and enrollment. Uh, so unfortunately, we're not set up for that to answer that question, but it's a good question. It's something we want to look forward to in the future. Okay, thank you all so much. <laughs>